It's so good to be back with you. And um, I, what we're going to do, I, I'm going to just give you a little bit brief for those of you who may not remember us, uh, who we are and where we serve. And then uh, my uh, three of our daughters will uh, come and, and they will sing a song in the island language. And I think, Angelina, maybe you can tell them just a few words of what it, what it means. And so you get a little taste of what, uh, what the island sounds like, island language sounds like. And then, um, and then we'll uh, go into the, uh, the actual service or proceed with the, uh, the message. So uh, Yap, uh, so we're the Zimmer family um, serving in Yap, Micronesia. We've been there actually in August of 2001 is when we arrived in Yap. Um, and uh, so we've been there almost 20 years. And it's, it's been a great joy to serve the Lord there. We've seen God do amazing things. Uh, we, started, um, uh, we started the church, uh, Faith Baptist Church there, and um, seen some other churches um, get started as well, and then and into the outer islands. And then uh, we, we started the uh, uh, Faith Christian Academy, and that's been, uh, we're going to talk about more about that in Sunday school. I'll tell you what's happening over there. But, you know, I don't, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Pastor Joe's dad has, has had his, his, really his fingerprints are all over our ministry because the people that are, are the leaders right now in our church and in, our, uh, in the school, in the ministry there, they've, Pastor Joe has had a vital part in training them and, and uh, shaping them for service. Uh, in our island, because we sent them off to to, uh, to harvest in Guam, and he was one of the teachers there, and really one of the people that impacted those students. You, when you ask them, you know, you know, what what was the big thing in your life that you know, and it's up, many times it's something to do with uh, with uh, Pastor Joe's dad, how he just uh, his love for them and his heart, and um, his, his just just such a. An amazing, amazing man to uh, just love on those kids and 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 then pull them towards uh, the way they're supposed to go and and then send them back. Uh, it's just been amazing. Uh, so we have we have a school there in Yap, and there's um, a lot of the teachers there, uh, and all of them sat under under Pastor Joe, uh, um, the senior. <laughs> so <clears throat> it's been it's been it's just amazing. But uh, so. That's a little, oh, where's Yap? Okay, so Yap is about 1,000 miles east of the Philippines, and it's about 500 miles southwest of Guam. So if you go to Guam, turn left, you're there, or go to, go to the Philippines and then bounce, bounce back uh, 1,000 miles into the sea, and there's a little island about 4,000 miles past uh, Hawaii, I believe it is, somewhere around there, 3,500, 4,000 miles past Hawaii, straight down. But <clears throat> that's, where we're, that's where we've been serving. Uh, of course, like, like Pastor Joe said, we're locked out still. Uh, they don't have COVID in Yap. It never came, uh, but uh, they don't ever want it. And so as a result, they locked the island and no disembarking peop, uh, in passengers on the island, period. Um, things are lightening up now. They have the vaccine and people are getting vaccinated. And, um, and actually, there is some rays of light coming here. Uh, they just allowed a... Uh, a a pilot and his family to come in, bring another, a new plane into the island. Uh, and so that they are there uh, for about a week now. They've been there. It looks like probably June, we're expecting this month uh, coming in June, we'll be able to uh, head back. So that's, that's our prayer. It's been every two months. We're, and I'll, I'll tell you more about that at Sunday school. It's been, we've tried every possible way. Um, the, the governor, I just call and, and he knows my name and it's because I keep calling him and asking him about how we're gonna get in and uh, writing him letters and the, the FSM president, I write him and talk to him. The COVID, uh, the COVID task force chairman for the FSM, he, I mean, yeah, I mean, he, he, uh, we, he'd just write me and I would write him and I'd call him and try to get, find ways to get in, but uh, it, was just, it was just locked down. So, uh, but anyway, we're excited to be able to get back. Um, and it's, um, it's, you know, it's been a great test though for those people there to be able to keep things moving forward. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll tell you a little bit about that later. But for right now, let's have, uh, have Angelina, Sarah, and Clara come on up here, and they can sing this uh, island song.
Okay, so this song that we're singing is um, one that we kind of grew up singing with our friends, and um, it's, it's from the outer islands of Yap. They have actually a different language um, that, they, that they speak there, and most of our friends spoke that language. So, um, so this song is really about when we go through tr trouble, trials, um, things like that, not only is God looking down at us and watching us and, and there with us, but we also look to him through that. Um, and so basically the chorus is saying that Jesus is our, our life, Jesus is our breath, Jesus is our rest through all of these hard things that we go through. Okay, um, thank you girls. Uh, I want to also say thank you to you all for your uh, prayers for us and your faithful uh, support, your help in so many ways when, uh, with the COVID issues and the struggle we've been ha having with the, you know, the switching over, getting computers and all of the different things. You, you all have been just right there uh, partnering with us and holding our hand and, and just helping us in so many ways. And I just want to I just want to say thank you all for for that, and that's uh, such a such a huge, a huge blessing. And um, and you know, be, because of because of that, I believe you've been instrumental in allowing things to keep moving forward uh, when there's no way it could, uh, when apart from those kind of sacrifices and gifts. And so I want to thank you uh, from the bottom of our hearts t for for those things that you that you guys have done and uh, the prayers and, and everything. Um, it's, it's, it's been a hard year. It's been a tough year. That wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> well, imagine you've given your life to serve and to work. And then you have to just, you're, you're pulled up, you're uprooted, and you can't go back. And you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how you're going to do it. You can't get your teachers in. You can't, you, you know, right in the middle of our building project. We can't, I can't we can't finish. And um, back, um, back in, in, in March, Sherry left, 
because her parents were sick in the beginning of March, and they locked the island down. Me and the girls were, we were locked out. Um, Sarah and Claire, Sarah, Claire and I, we were locked out, uh, locked in, I should say, um, for 10 weeks. We were stuck. We couldn't, we couldn't be a family. Um, we, stuck, we were just stuck there, separated and apart. And, um, but thank God he allowed um, the, really the State Department, the, the U.S. Embassy, and, uh, which not the U.S. Embassy in Pohnpei because they, they, were, they evacuated and it was only Pohnpeians answering the phone because um, I was trying everything I could do. But, um, but there was, a, uh, there was a, a radio station up in uh, Boston where I, uh, there was a, a, um, uh, the, the radio host, Dan Ray, we've been on his program actually a couple of times, and that's another story, but um, I, I was like desperate. I'm, I tried everything. I'll tell you some of the things we tried to get out of there. Uh, and then we've tried everything to get back, and we can't. Uh, but anyway, long story short, um, um, he, was, he knew some people in Washington that was able to get involved and force United to fly in for just uh, the three of us, and I think there was just a couple of others, that, uh, foreigners, that were stuck. And, um, and then some others that needed some medical stuff, they, they were able to get on that flight as well. But yeah, that's how, that's, it's just been a, it's been a tough, uh, it's been a tough go, but you know the Lord has been faithful, and He always is. He's helped us through it, and um, so we're excited to get back. And hopefully, you know, this is the first time I've l- let this out like this. It's, I'm sorry, I can barely get through this, and, and I don't know why. Um, maybe hearing the song, I don't know, but I'm, we miss it. We miss the people there. We miss uh, being. I I got. There's so many things I've got to do. I've got a container sitting there on the dock that I've got to get off, and hopefully they won't charge me by the day as they're supposed to for um, not getting it off the dock. And so there's just a lot of things, but the Lord, is, uh, the Lord has been good, and, and we, try, we just praise the Lord for, um, you know, that this, everything is going forward. Everything is going forward. They're, we're having a graduation coming up in a few days, and how many, how many seniors graduating? 16 seniors graduating. Um, while we were gone um, this year, one of our students um, um, just saw things happening at home that have, that just, anyway, we, we lost one of our students uh, this year. And, um, but through that, God brought people to himself. Uh, and, and souls were saved in the school as a result of, of this one that, that uh, passed away. And so it's been, a, it's been a big year, but God is, is working. He's still at work there, and there's people there that um, uh, Pastor Joe's dad trained, and they're there, and they're serving, and they're keeping the ministry going forward and advancing, advancing. That's just amazing. But that's what it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be, but, you know, um, it wasn't in our plan. It wasn't our thought how it was all going to happen like that, but it, it's happened that way. So we're praising the Lord. And you guys, you guys met Fiving. Um, when we couldn't get our, so we flew back. Last, last time I came, uh, we had Fitting Row, which, which is like one of the brothers of, of uh, our kids because he grew up next door and was always in our house. He's one of our teachers uh, this year So because um, we couldn't get our teachers in. We, there was just no way we could get our teachers in, and so he was willing to help us, and he helped us and, and uh, taught all the whole year, and he did great, and, and the students loved him. And uh, So anyway, um, so I guess now Sherry and I are going to sing uh, The Mercies of God, and then we'll uh, go to, into the message. And let me just say hi real quick. Okay. Um, you know, the Lord is off the top. <coughs> at some point, Christ will return for us. And somebody's building isn't going to get done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so we have to be faithful with what he puts in our hands. And, and, and while we're doing the building or whatever, you fill in the blank, we're saying, we're pointing people to the Lord. So I love this song, The Mercies of God, because it just puts me in a good mood. I just The mercies of God. If there's one word, I can say, Lord, have mercy. So mm-hmm. he's so good. The mercies of God, what a theme for my song. Oh, I never could number them more. They're more than the stars in the heavenly dome. 
O'er the sands of the wave-beaten shore. For mercy so great, what return can I make? For mercy so constant and sure. I'll love him, I'll serve him with all that I have, as long as my life shall endure. His goodness and mercy will follow me still, even on to the end of the have his sure promise and that cannot fail that his mercy is mine every day for mercy so great what return can i make for mercy so constant and sure I'll love him, I'll serve him with all that I have, as long as my life shall endure. If you turn your Bibles, let's look to the book of Philippians. <clears throat> and you know, as I was thinking about this and, and, and um, going through this passage here, Philippians chapter 1, uh, we're going to be looking at 9 through 11, verses 9 through 11, but I, th- I think I could understand a little about what Paul was facing as he's writing this from prison to the the church at Philippi. Um, He's he's locked up. There's nothing he can do except pray for them, write them letters, and that's it. And you can see his his heart as he's as he's talking to them and and here in chapter one where he's 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 you can just see his heart he's praying for them and he's 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 wanting them to to increase in their love for god he's wanting them to increase in their love for each other and their outreach and their ministry and he's wanting them to advance even though he's he can't go he can't go see them he can't preach to them or talk to them except he can write these letters and he can he can pray for them and, uh, and you see it over and over that he's praying for them, and he's, and he's, he's wanting them to, to succeed in their Christian life. And so I, as I was thinking about what he's writing here to these people, I can understand a little bit of what, what he's facing there. Now, not to the same degree. I mean, we're locked out, but I'm not locked up, you know. Uh, that's a big difference, right? That's a big difference. But I'm sure his heart was aching for these people. And he was longing to see them so badly. He wanted to be there. He wanted to, 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 to partner with them and serve alongside them and, and see them grow. And, and I, I, I'm sure that you can imagine the, the heart of the Apostle Paul as he's, as he's writing them this letter. And in, verse, in verse 9, he says, This I pray. Well, let's start in verse 8. So for God is my record. He says, I promise this is, God knows how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. Just the, my, my love for you is so strong. I just want to be there. I just want to, to, to see you grow. I want to experience what's actually happening uh, on the, right there with you all in the, in the church there and how God is moving and working. I want to I hear from you what God is doing in your lives. And his heart is aching for them. And you can see that in the language here. And then in verse 9, he says, This I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, 
that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere without offense until the day of Jesus Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you, Lord, for how it speaks to our hearts. And Lord, we pray for uh, each of us this morning as we look at this passage of Scripture that you'll help us to see some things, Lord, that that will help us in our, in our walk with you, in our Christian lives, Lord, in our ministries, in, our, in the things that we're doing each day. Lord, God, help, help your word to impact our lives in a, in a long-lasting way to make changes uh, that, that, that need to be made in our lives. Lord, we, we love you and we thank you for, for your word and, and how it speaks to us. Thank you for your spirit that guides us and that that teaches us in, in all truth from your word and, and speaks to our hearts through your word. We love you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we see there's, there's, there's four things we're going to see in this prayer that Paul is praying for the, the people there at the church at Philippi. Um, the first thing we see very, there in verse 9, he says, This I pray that your love may abound yet more and more. He wants, he wants their love for, really, it's a, it's a two-fold. It's a two, two-pronged love, really. It would be a love for God, a love for the things that God loves, and also a love for others. So what did Jesus say? Jesus said uh, there's, there's the, the, the two commandments that hang all the other commandments is what? Love God and love others, Right? And I think, I think if there's anything that's going to hold back the church there and hold back the church in Yap and hold back us today, it's a misplaced love. I think if our, if our the, what is the, the biggest hindrance, I think, to, to, to following what God says or the biggest hindrance to discipleship, the biggest hindrance to evangelism, I think is misplaced love. So if our love is right, everything else is going to be right. We don't have to, like Jesus was saying, we don't have to, we don't have to tell, uh, you know, he, we wouldn't have to say don't steal. If you love your neighbor, you're not going to steal, right? We'd have to say, you know, all these different, uh, all the different um, commandments hang upon those two things. Love God and love others. Love your neighbor as yourself. Those two things. And so here Paul is saying, he prayed that their love would abound more and more. Just overflowing love, just growing love for God and love for others. And if that is right, everything else is going to be right. Uh, it's a bi-directional love. It's love for God and it's love for others. So it's, this, it's up this way and it's, up, it's uh, out, out around us as well. Uh, there's, there's two ways this happens. How, how, so how can we have that kind of love? The kind of love that God is that Paul is praying for the church here, the kind of love that, uh, that, that, that God is telling us that we need to have, how can we have that kind of love? Well, I think, I think there's, there, it's, it's right here uh, in this passage, growing knowledge is first. Look at this, that I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge. We have to, we have to uh, know God. The more we know God, the more our knowledge increases of who he is, and what he's done for us, the more we're going we're gonna to want to do what he wants us to do. The more we love him the way he loved us, the more we're going to want to see others around us uh, come to know this creator God. So that it, we got to increase in our knowledge, our knowledge of God. And also, how am I, so if I'm going to, if I'm going to help someone that's around me, maybe a neighbor, maybe a friend. I've got to be into their life enough to know what their needs are, right? So if, if your love for each other in this church, okay, is going to meet the needs of the people of this church, we have to know what those needs are. We have to get in their lives and spend the time and, and have uh, impactful relationship with them so we can understand, oh, uh, what they need is this, or we, you know, maybe just in, in conversation. Hey, how how can I help you? What is what's going on in your life? And just ask those questions so you're able to meet those needs. 
So love for God, love for others. It's a, it's a knowledge, it's a knowledge of God that, that, uh, that drives us forward to do what he wants us to do. And it's a, it's a knowledge of, of, the, of others, of what their needs are and how we can meet those needs, what we can do to get into their lives and help them where they are. And, you know, sometimes, uh, especially in discipleship where, you know, maybe you're coming alongside of someone who is, is new to the faith or maybe they're not, they are not even saved yet. What, what happens is as we're, as we're getting into their lives, it's, it gets messy sometimes. You know, we're, we're, and we got to kind of walk them through getting away from those. You know what? Because it would be great if the day we got saved, all of our problems went away. All the addictions were done. All of the, whatever it is we had, those struggles we had before, it would be awesome if they was all gone the moment we got saved. Wouldn't that be great? But it's not that way. You know? And so many times, I mean, I, I can think of oh, so, so many things. I, if I, I were, you know, in, in Yap, okay, I've, I, I've got a call from someone, okay, um, and said, hey, you know, my husband didn't come home, and he, he's out drinking again. And I'm like, oh. so I go, and I'll try to find him. I'll try to, and I, this, this is a big dude, okay, He's not a small guy, big guy, and literally one time found him, threw him on my shoulder with a fireman's carry, and carried him out of this place. He's drunk, took him home, you know, tried to get him sober and try to help him. And, you know, you're, when you're getting into the lives of people, you're going to, you, it's, it's messy sometimes. But you know what the reality is? If we're honest, all of us are messy. In some way or another. There's all there's there's something in every one of us that that needs work, that needs change. And if we will be willing to get into the lives of the people right here in this room, right here, get into each other's lives and and help us all go forward for God and be what we're supposed to be. Listen, that's what Paul is talking about here. Paul's saying we gotta have love for God, love for others, we gotta know our God, and we got to know what the needs of others so we can be in their lives and we can help them. So, so that's the first thing. He prayed their love would abound. Overflowing love. It's going to be a love that's impacting the lives of, of people around them. It's a contagious, you, you know, I don't know if you've heard the phrase contagious Christianity, being a contagious Christian. When, when someone is like that, people want to be like that. You know, if, if someone is in their life, you know, helping people around them and bringing them to the Lord and bringing them to, in, in some way, help, help them walk with God and, and grow in their relationship with Christ, it, it makes others want that as well. So, he prayed that their love would abound, would be overflowing. Uh, the, the second thing, he, he prayed that... Uh, well, we can just get it right from the text here. Okay, this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. The second thing, verse 10, that you may approve things that are excellent. That you may approve things that are excellent. What does this mean? Know what's best. You know, you have, you have 50 different options, you know? It's kind of like, it's kind of like um, we were talking uh, yesterday, Angelina and I, about how that at the, in the grocery stores, a lot of times, they'll put the, uh, the kids' cereal with the little, you know, cartoon characters on it, right, at eye level of a child. So that when you're in the store with your kids, they're going to be grabbing, you know, the Cocoa Krispies or, you know, Cocoa Puffs or, you know, those kinds of things, right? Um, but the, the, Christian, the reality is there's, there's good and there's best. Right? I mean, Cocoa Krispies, I like Cocoa Krispies, okay? But there's, there's probably a better cereal for me, you know? Some, there's something better that'll probably do a little more, you know, less sugar, less, you know, more whatever. Uh, but, but even more so, in the Christian life, there's approved things that are excellent means know what's best. We have all these different options of things we could do. Well, what is best 
for me? What does God want for me? What is God's plan for my life? What is his will for me? There's a lot of options. But approved things that are excellent means you know what's best. You know what God really wants you to do. I remember as we were, trying, we were praying about Yap and trying to think of what, uh, what, where God would have us to go. I remember every, every missionary that came up and was talking about his island or his service, place of service, we were, I was like, man, Lord, send us there. Whether it's India or Africa, or, you know, it didn't matter. Anybody that was coming in, it was like, oh, man, I want to go there. I want to serve there. Because why? We wanted to serve. We, were, we knew God was calling us to the mission field. We didn't know where. But we just wanted to go. We didn't know where. But God had a specific place. He had a specific place that he wanted us to serve. It was right there in Yap, and he called us there, and he led us there, and he, he, he helped us get there, and he's kept us there. And, um, and, but approve things that are excellent means know what's best. What is, there's a lot of different good options. Well, what is best? What is God's plan? What does he want uh, for you and for me? Um, and it has the idea of knowing what's, what's really important, Okay? Okay, there's, you know, we have, there's so many different options of things we could do, but how about if we put it to the eternity test? Does this matter in the light of eternity? Does this really, does it really matter? And when you, many things that are good, when you put them to the test of eternity, how does this affect, does there any eternal impact in what I'm going to do? Suddenly, it changes a lot of things. Knowing what's best, approving things that are excellent, means putting it to the eternity test, knowing what's really important. Okay, the next thing that, that Paul did is he prayed they be real, not fake. Look, look at this. He says, um, approve things that are excellent, that be, you may be insincere without offense till the day of Jesus Christ. So, Sincere has the idea of being real, tested by sunlight. Um, you know, when, when you, you go to, the, you go to um, any store or whatever, and you have a, any kind of bill that's bigger than a 20, um, what are they going to do? They're going to take a pen, the, some kind of a marker. I don't know exactly what it, kind of marker it is, but they take that thing, and they'll just put a swipe along it. And... I don't know what happens if it's the wrong color or what. I don't know if it's, maybe you guys know what they're actually looking for. I don't know what they're looking for, but I see them take the pen, swipe it on there, and it's usually, I think it's brown. It comes out brown and, and they take the bill, right? Well, that means it's not counterfeit. It's not fake, right? Well, sincere has that idea, real, not fake, tested. Tested. And then it's, uh, there it says, without offense, to the day of Jesus Christ. The idea of, of there's, nothing, there's nothing that people can grab hold of and say, see, it's not real. Christianity isn't real. People, you know, you know one of the, the biggest, I would say one of the biggest arguments that people who are not saved give is they say, I'm not going to, do, down there at the church, there's a bunch of hypocrites. I'm not going there. I don't want to join those. There's a bunch of hypocrites over there. Right? Why? Because people claiming Christ were living in such a way that they were not, their, their love for God was not real. Or wasn't, certainly wasn't evident by what they did or what they said. And so Paul is praying, I want you to be real. I want your love for God to not just be words you say on Sunday, but in your life that as you're living through the week, it changes how you live. That's what God is, that's what Paul is saying through the power of the Holy Spirit as he's writing this. So I want your love to be real. I want your, I want your, your walk with God to be real. Not just a bunch of words or not just, you know, something you talk about, but actually impacting how you live and what, what decisions you make in your life. It says that you may, being, um, that you may be uh, approved of things that are excellent, that you may be sincere uh, without offense until the day of Jesus Christ, 
Not perfect, okay? Not perfect. There's no perfect person. But not by our life pointing people away from Christ. That's the idea there. Our lives, by our life, we should point people to Christ, not away. And then the last thing there, verse 11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. So, he's praying their life would bear fruit. And listen, if, if, our, if our love is in the right place, our love for God is where it should be, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect everything else about us. It's going to affect our love for others. It's going to affect how we do our work, how we live our lives before the people at work. It's going to, it, there's just going to be, it's going to, it's going to change things. And I think that's why he started it right there with love. But he says there, he prayed that their lives would bear fruit. And how does, how can my life, how can your life bear fruit? I want you to think about that for a second. What, what, what is he talking about there when he says bear fruit? I think definitely our life bearing fruit is by our lives, by the things we do, we're pointing people to Christ. By the things we do, we're not distracting from Christ. We're drawing to Christ. By our life, we're pointing people to Christ. And that, that fruit there, being filled with all the fruits of righteousness, those are, those are things we do because we love God. Not because we're trying, to, we're trying to earn merit or favor with God, but because we love Him, we do what we do. And it says there, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. It's, it's, just, it's, it's a reflection pointing everyone to Christ. When they say, man, this happened, or that man, what, what's going on here? It's, it's, a, it's, an, just a, it's a deflecting of whatever it is and pointing to Jesus Christ. And that's how our lives should be. Now, it's not always that way. And there's always work to do in our lives, right? But, but we shouldn't see a whole lot of, you know, there's a, there's a I, I heard a, um, an illustration about um, um, this guy went and he, he planted this apple tree and, um, and the, it was not giving good apples. And so, and his wife kept asking, well, you know, you can try to fix this tree, you know, do, you know, do something to get it, you know, to make good fruit. And so he went, he was tired of hearing it. So he went, and I, I heard it from a guy who said he did this. So this, this is just, it was just amazing to me. It's funny, but, but he took and he went and he got apples from the store beautiful, shiny, luscious apples, and he tied them all over the tree. And he said, honey, come and look. <laughs> the tree said, I got you good apples that you wanted. And <laughs> that's not the kind of fruit we're talking about here. But you know what? A lot of times, that's what we do. We just tie on the apple instead of Instead of what we're doing coming out from a love for God and a love for others, and we're serving God and we're, we're living our lives for Him, instead we're just tying on apples and just making it try to look like the fruit's on the tree. But the reality, it's not. Or it's bad. Or it's, you know, wormy. Or, you know, whatever. But God wants our lives to bear fruit. He wants it not to be just tied on fruit on the tree. He wants it to be real, genuine, sincere, true. And I think if we can pray this for ourselves, what this passage here, Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 through 11, if we could just, if we can pray this about our, to, our, to, to God for ourselves, pray it to God for our children, pray it to God for the others in this church, we can pray it to God for uh, the people there in Yap, that, where God has called us to serve. This is, this will change things. That our love for God would drive us forward 
to serve him and to bear fruit and to, to know what's best. Know the difference between good and best. Know what his will is for our lives. And I think, I think that, that'll change things. That'll change how we live. And that'll change our effectiveness in reaching the people around us. Because no one wants to... People know when the fruit's tied on. You can see the string. <laughs> it's evident. It's real evident. I was... Um, I worked at a, a tire store when I was in college trying to get through, um, pay for my schooling <clears throat> at Bob Jones. It's back in the, in the 90s, 90, 93, 94, I was working at this tire store. And, um, and there was a guy there, and his name was Drew. And he, Drew, he was a salesman, and you know, salesmen, we were, we were all salesmen, okay? There was a bunch of us salesmen up front, okay? And, um, and salesmen can be, great, but they can also really be cutthroat. And this guy was very cutthroat. He was just trying to get those sales, and, and, um, and they would give us like 50 cents for this tire, or a dollar for that tire, or whatever, you know, if you sold it. And, and so anyway, but Drew was always trying to work his angles to steal your sale. Always. You know, you take a phone call, and you save this, this thing, and uh, it's saved in the, in the uh, computer, and um, and uh, he would, he would steal your sale. <clears throat> and everyone was complaining about it. And, but I just let him do it. I let him, take, I'd let him steal my sale. I didn't, I didn't say anything. But the guys, other guys knew that he was stealing my sales. And so there was this other guy that was working there trying to get through Clemson for college. And um, <clears throat> one day we're, we, we're closing up. Because I said, this is what I did. I said, I said God, you know Drew's stealing my sales. You know, Drew's stealing my sales. Give me sales that he can't steal. Just give me sales that he can't steal. Somehow, give me some sales that, I can, that he's not going to steal. And you know what? God did. And I got it. I, I, I was, it was just, it was, God did it. It was okay. It was God that was doing it. But this, the, the, people would walk in, this, some dude, and, you know, just not driving a nice car, whatever, and then he wants this, you know, these awesome tires for this, his other car, right? And it's just, it was just crazy, but God did it, and, and I'd be right there at the top of those, those uh, sales charts or whatever, and, um, and so after we were closing up, we are closing up the, uh, the uh, store one night, and, there was, and this guy from Clemson was closing up with me, and he, he was like, he's like, kind of looking at me, and he's like, he says, you must you must be one of those born-again Christians. That's what he said. You must be one of those born-again. I, I, hadn't, I hadn't, he was brand new. I mean, he'd been there like maybe a week. And he's like, you must be one of those born-again Christians. And I said, yeah, I am. And he goes, well, what's the difference? <laughs> and I got to share with him. Well, listen, this is honest truth. I don't know, it was maybe four years later. You know, it, then shortly after that, school was done. I quit there and did some other things, and I didn't see him anymore. Um, but we, many nights, the, last, you know, the next few weeks, I got to share with him about the truth, okay, and the, the gospel message, and he had so many questions, and we'd talk. He never got saved while I was there, but a, a few years, I don't know, three or four years later, I saw him at Bob Jones at the school there, and he's sitting next to um, this, this um, girl that I knew from college, and he had gotten saved. And they had gotten married, met at, at a church near their college, uh, near, near Clemson somewhere. And they were, they, were, they were coming to visit the school for maybe a Vespers or I don't know. And I was visiting for something. Anyway, and there they were. And I was just so shocked. I couldn't believe it. But I thought, you know what? I had a little, I had a little part in, in that. I didn't get to actually lead him to the Lord, but I had a little part in it. Right? And because... because I wouldn't get upset when they stole my sales. Um, and so, you know, each, and that's just a, one little example, but there, you, each of us can find out ways how we can ha affect and impact the people around us. And I don't know, I don't know how, what the need is in your life. I don't know what you, what you're, you're, where you are, but each of us here. But I know, there's, I, know that, I know that God has something for each one of us to do. He has something that's best. He has something that he wants us to do. And uh, this prayer is Paul praying for the Philippines. I pray it for Yap. 
and I pray it for you as well. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your love for us. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. And Lord, we just pray for each one of us here today. Lord, help us to, to live out these, these truths in our lives each day. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Pastor Joe. Uh, go by the table. You guys set up some things in the lobby, didn't you? So go by the table. Do you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Paul, come, come, come tell them about your CDs. Yeah. So, yeah. so the, um, the CDs at the table, we just think of it as a singing prayer card. Take one. Just take it. We don't, it's no charge. Just take it. It just hymns, but maybe it'll be a blessing to you. We have a few CDs back there. Yeah. Thank awesome. you. Thanks. Paul. One for family. Yeah, so if, if you want to grab one CD off their table, they said it's like a, a singing prayer card. It'll be a reminder to pray for the Zimmers and Yap, one per family. And uh, it'll, it'll be something that you can put in your car, play in your house, and, uh, and uh, think uh, along with them about what has been shared with you. I'd ask you as well, would you stay for the second hour? We're going to dismiss from here in just a moment. And we're going to head over to the other building, and I'd love for you to be able to hear more from them about this last year. You, you heard the emotion in Paul's voice, and, and you got to be alive for it, right? Right here, he said it hasn't done this yet, but, uh, but uh, this has been a heavy year. And, and I would like for you to be able to hear from them the burden on their heart, uh, and also kind of translate that into your thinking and your praying for our other missionaries. Um, I have talked to so many missionaries this last year that have wrestled more in the last 12 to 15 months than in maybe their entire ministry for the Lord in missions. Uh, questioning, uh, asking the Lord, what's going on? Am I in the right place? Will I ever get to go back and do what I thought you had called me to do? Um, I'd like you to hear from them a little bit more about what God's been doing in their hearts. I think it'll help you know how to pray uh, for our missionaries even, even better. So, Pastor Dave, would you come close, lead us in our closing song, and then I'll give just a few more announcements before we take off. All right, brother? Thank you.